Middlesex, London. No, back. Five one nine six seven nine. Steve, this is Gary Thompson calling. I'm just reading an article. Adam Bennett was in the news last April. Adam Bennett, he's a superintendent at Middlesex, London, EMS. Yeah. And it was about overdose. And he mentions oh, it about drug overdose. It was a story, it was called question and answer, what's it like to be first on the scene when someone overdosed? So in his quotes, it's a direct quotes, question and answer from the reporter. He says, when they show up, this is, when we show up, either the person is unconscious and they're having very shallow respiratory rates and people are given CPR when they show up. They've taught millions of people in this country all the signs of drug overdose, which can mimic any respiratory emergency, deny rescue breathing, and give chest compressions. I'm showing up on scene on a regular basis. Parents giving their children non-drug overdoses, they're alive and they're giving them chest compressions. And we've got a ventilator shortage for this COVID-19. That's one of the reasons why there was a private member's bill in front of the legislature. Last year was the second reading of Bill 105. Dr. Daryl Gibbon there was their emergency physician mentioned over and over its rescue breathing. Doris Grinspun, CEO of the Registered Nurses Association, Ontario, mentioned its first aid rescue breathing. And then she mentioned that Brad Chapman's coroner's inquest family had to pull life support, permanent neurologic impairment. And another gentleman was there in the media room, Rick Frame, had to pull life support from his brother, permanent brain damage. It's utter sort of nonsense, but... Um, yeah, um, if you would like to, I, it, I'm having a hard time kind of uh, hearing you there. Oh, yeah? But, um, mm. if, if, yeah, if you want to... Uh, um, leave a message or, or uh, talk to Adam, I can give you his extension. Oh, okay. And you can look it all up. I've been publishing all the medical journals. I was publishing the resuscitation guidelines. It's up on my Twitter. Okay. At Gary CPR. Okay. Oh, so, and Adam's extension? Um, 1150. 1150. Okay. And on my Twitter, at Gary CPR, I'm, it's good. we're, we're going to have a multi-billion dollar class action suit one day, and the taxpayer pays for that mm -hmm. one, too. Anyway, thanks. Nice chat. Would you, Steve? No problem. Already, thanks. Yep, right. Well, I've talked to this guy. <laughs> Adam, what'd you do that for? Eh? <laughs> one. Five. One, nine, six, seven, nine, four, six, six. Okay, press the buttons. Hello, you've reached the metal sex line and paramedic service. If you have an emergency or require an ambulance, please hang up and dial 911. Wait while I transfer your call. Adam Bennett. Sorry, 
Mary. Adam Bennett. Is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. Yeah, Adam, it's Gary Thompson calling in regards to a newspaper article last year, question and answer, what it's like to be first on the scene when someone overdosed. It's got in here, one of the parts says, uh, they show you show up to scene, they're unconscious, having shallow breathing, and there are people given CPR. And then you mention further down, the, your response is opioid depress the respiratory rate along with the heart rate. Well, rarely does opioids cause bradycardia. I'm showing up to scenes all the time. People giving their non-drug overdose children chest compressions because they've taught millions of people to deny rescue breathe and give chest compressions to people who are alive. And they're eagerly doing it. We got a shortage of ventilators. For this COVID, there was a private member's bill in front of the legislature last year. Daryl Gibby, an emergency physician, quoted over and over again, it's risk rescue breathing. Doris Grenspun, CEO of the Registered Nurses Association, she says it's first aid rescue breathing. And then she mentioned Brad Chapman's coroner's inquest. The family had to pull life support, permanent neurologic impairment. And there was also another Gentlemen in the media room, Rick Frain, had to do the same thing with his brother. You empower millions of people what they think is a life-saving technique. They're eagerly doing it. 647-864-6609 is my number. And you can look it all up on my Twitter, at GaryCBR. I was publishing the resuscitation guidelines about it in 2015. AHA and Elcor. Anyway, you have a great day.